health and safety in surgery. The standard of care we provide has to be the best and nothing less than the best. Surgery is not an event, it is actually part of the journey that the patient undertakes under your care. The patient's journey begins when he or she sees you in the surgical outpatients. And the journey truly ends when the patient has been discharged following the procedure and the patient is back to the community doing his uh, or her normal routines. The health and safety of this surgical journey can be categorized into three phases. The pre-operative, also called as the preparatory phase, the operative or the performance stage and the post-operative or the recovery phase. It is not only important to have the adequate knowledge, skill and expertise, but also be aware of the patient's circumstances, the patient needs, patient preferences. As a surgeon, I think surgery is probably least of the cognitive tasks that one has to undertake. The difficulty is the decision making. The difficulty is actually deciding what is the right thing for the patient. The difficulty is communicating, communicating the risk that the patient is putting himself or herself into. So I think it is important that communication is taken care of, risk communication is adequately attended to, the given pathology or the disease process is adequately explained, various treatment options are provided to the patient including the, the option of not doing anything, the risks and benefits of the procedures are all explained, the data is put in front of the patient and help is provided to make a joint decision making in the process. Majority of the patients who come will have some amount of comorbidities. It is important to attend to these comorbidities and optimize their medical problems. It could be as simple as bringing the sugars back to control, controlling the blood pressure, even transiently if possible to stop smoking if one or if he or she is smoking and undertake good exercise regimen so that your pulmonary function can be optimized for the procedure. This we call it as pre-optimization, essentially cutting down on the risk factors and optimizing one's physiology, going for brisk walks, improving one's pulmonary function, having nutritious diet so as to prepare for the surgical procedure, stopping smoking, and also getting all the medical problems under control. If you do this, one is reasonably prepared for the operation. Not only it is important to optimize the patient physically, but it is important to optimize the patient physiologically and psychologically. There is a true science behind it. What one does as a surgeon to a patient is an organized, systematic assault. And science has shown the physiological changes that happen as a result of this assault. And Brian Cuthbertson, who was one of the famous clinicians with a lot of research behind him, went on to show the physiological changes that happens as an ebb and a flow phase. An assault brings a catabolic state or a destructive state to the patient and all that we are doing by doing the pre-optimization is dampening this effect of catabolization. This is what pre-optimization is all about, not only physically but physiologically and psychologically. Once somebody is prepared for the procedure, he comes to the hospital and it is our duty to look into the health and safety measures of the patient. It could be the environment in which the patient is in. It could be the pre-operative preparation 
that one has to go could include antibiotics, could include bowel preparations, could include shaving the hair, so on and so forth. Additionally, the basic precautionary measures have to be taken, which could include having TED stockings, using blood thinners for the patient to keep the blood protected against venous thromboembolic processes. We need to be aware of the hospital acquired infections that one can be exposed to. So it is important that perioperatively a checklist is used and all the right things are done to prevent the potential possible complications one can be exposed to. Perioperatively, you should undertake everything that can reduce the impact of the physiological assault such as maybe laparoscopic surgery which is slightly better than open surgery. Try and use the drains to a limited extent. Try and use tubes only as much as required and also get the patient back to mobility sooner rather than later because mobility is the best form of protection against the venous thromboembolic complications. And paraoperatively, we all follow the World Health Organization's checklist, which is very, very vital so that there are no never events or there are no critical incidents that happen as a consequence of errors. Once the operation is done, the patient has to be looked after in the post-operative period, paying attention to the common complications that can ensue, such as cardiac events, respiratory events, gastrointestinal upsets, so on and so forth. It could be as simple as using spirometry and giving adequate chest physiotherapy to prevent atelectasis, to prevent chest infections, you know, as well as getting the patient mobile so that the physiology can be reverted to uh, a functional state sooner rather than later. It is important we attend to the wound infections or surgical site infections and all measures are taken to prevent them. Check the dressings regularly, auscultate the chest regularly, get the patient up and about. Simple things, these are the ones which are going to make a difference to the health and safety of this patient. Nutrition is very vital and we should get the patient back on nutrition as soon as possible. And in the event there is delay of more than four or five days, start thinking about alternative nutritional strategies such as parental nutrition. The patient has done well, the wounds are all healing up and then you want to get the patients home. Our health and safety measures doesn't stop here. It will continue to happen even when he goes home. For example, when we undertake cancer surgeries or cancer resections, we are obliged to send the patients home with some sort of chemo prophylaxis for venous thromboembolic events. Therefore, the patients go with either low molecular weight heparin or at least a small dose of aspirin for the next four weeks after the operation. And there is certainly a necessity and a need for psychological support and that feel and comfort that there is somebody across the phone for the patients to reach the doctors. I think in summary, Health and safety is very vital for patient care. The journey doesn't start during the operation. The journey starts when the patient is seen in the outpatients. Physical, physiological and psychological optimization is very vital. Paraoperative strategies of safety are of paramount importance. World Health Organization's checklist is very, very important. Use techniques, tools, maneuvers which are minimally invasive and which are less damaging on the patient's physical and physiological state and once the patient is recovered you know you need to give them adequate advice on looking after their health and preventing post-operative complications in the immediate future after surgery if these things are taken care of i think we have done justice to the patient and we have done justice to the health and safety of the patient thank you